Welcome to Superior Profit Weekly Market Roundup, 9th December 2018. I am Sagar Nandi, Chief Analyst and Trader at Superior Profit based in Singapore. I will not take time to introduce myself. If you are interested to know more about me, the company Superior Profit or how it may help in your trading, you can visit the website superiorprofit.co and click on the About menu. Before we begin, we go through the standard disclaimer. This demonstration is for educational purposes only. It is designed to share information on superior profits trading system. The information presented here should only be used by people who are aware of the risk inherent in trading. Past performance is no guarantee of future return. Superior profit is not an investment advisor. This session is not for any recommendation of buying or selling stock or any other instrument, Superior Profit will have no liability for any investment decision made by its audience. As usual in today's topics, we'll analyze gold and oil using technical charts. They tend to impact related stocks. When swing trading stocks, we like to align them in the market's direction. We'll study market's direction using NASDAQ and NYSE market bread and technical analysis of market ETFs. In addition to aligning trades with the market's direction, we like to align them with the industry strength. We'll study industry strength using scorecard and heat map. Along the way, we may look at some of the recent trade examples from Traders Forum and look for potential trades for the coming week. That was the last slide of the presentation. Let's move to live system. We begin our commodities analysis with oil. We are looking at the oil ETF USO using weekly backdrop chart and daily hop on chart. Together we call this at a glance template because this template helps us decide if there is a low risk entry opportunity at the right edge of the chart in only a few seconds. Oil dropped heavily in this period. The weekly candle colors were bearish magenta. This week, oil recovered somewhat, ended with an indecisive shape candle. It has both upper and lower tails. It has a solid body, and the lower tail is much longer than the body. That is an indecisive shape candle. The color is also neutral yellow. In the daily chart, it tried to go up after the OPEC decision to cut oil production. That was on Friday, but closed lower. It started with a gap up open and closed lower. There is no Q swing trade setup at the right edge. If you remember our last swing trade decision using Q charts, was on this day when it broke down below a memory support that was in the weekly chart and it also gave the magenta color candle. Partial profit could be booked along the way and partial position could be held trying to let profit run. The remaining position could be held with trailing stop to make sure that profit doesn't erode and if you used Q protection signal as trailing stop, the remaining position would have stopped out on Friday. This is another view of USO daily chart using the hop off template that has the protection signal used for trailing stop. Our short entry was on this day. As the ETF went down, the trailing stop could be set at these cyan dots, that is the protection signal, stop loss level or protect profit level for a short position. On Friday, this stop level was hit. The trade ended with very high profit and the protection signal allowed you to capture the entire down move in the ETF. Gold ETF, GLD. In the weekly chart, 
it broke out of the watermark resistance, ended with a bullish shape that is hollow body candle and also a bullish color candle, cyan color. The relative performance line is showing that it is outperforming the market. In the daily chart, price was in a indecisive move for a while. This week it broke out of that pattern and ended the week above the upper boundary level and very close to the white direction line. It is already significantly higher than the recent low. Therefore, we don't have any low risk long entry in GLD right now. If gold pulls back little bit and goes up again, that will give us a low risk swing trade entry opportunity in the long direction. That would be using go with flow trend following trade setup. You could wait for that. If gold doesn't pull back but continues to move up from here, then you might try to take a long trade using Q fine tune template that is the intraday chart template and using one of the precision entry techniques that we have. From commodities analysis we move on to market breadth analysis. We are looking at Nasdaq composite index and NYSE composite index both using weekly charts. Because this analysis is using broad indices and longer term weekly interval it is to be used for longer term investment decisions not so much for swing trading and certainly not for day trading. Both Nasdaq and NYSE are now moving in a sideways range and the range is quite wide. This week price closed near the lower end of the range. Will it go up from here? That is possible. The other possibility is that this time it will break down the support and continue the down move. We don't know exactly for sure. We have to watch the market next week to see where it is going. If the support in NYSE and NASDAQ are broken, then if you are holding long positions, even for longer term investment purposes, you may be careful and protect your position. Either close your position with profit or maybe hedge your position with put option or other strategies. If we look at the internals, that is the new high low, advanced decline and up down volume, we can see that gradually the internals are turning negative. They used to be more above the zero level and now they are coming more below the zero levels. That is clearly a bearish indication. That is why you may be cautious if you are holding long positions and may protect or book profit on them. Let us see what further insight we can get from the market ETF analysis. S&P 500 ETF SPY This week SPY opened with a gap up and then sharply reversed from there creating a bearish engulfing candle in the weekly chart. The weekly candles shape and color both are very bearish. At the same time price closed just above the memory trend line support. In the daily chart it is moving inside a sideways pattern. It is also bound by resistance memory at the top, support memory at the bottom, a very wide triangle pattern. It may go up from here or it may break down from support. We have to see where it is going next week. If we look at the activity pattern then we can see the high activity days the thick bars are mostly red rather than green. That is showing that under the hood the market is more bearish than bullish. The same conclusion that we could reach from the market breadth analysis. QQQ NASDAQ ETF 
this also opened with a gap up on Monday and then reverse from there price is some distance away from the memory support in the weekly chart and there is no memory support in the daily chart there is a memory resistance it is also moving in down up down up down fashion we have to see where it goes next week Dow Jones Industrials ETF DIA similar pattern like SPY a sharp reversal candle in the weekly chart close to the memory support in the weekly chart in the daily chart bound by support and memory resistance lines the activity pattern is showing that it is more bearish than bullish Russell 2000 ETF IWM weekly created a bearish engulfing candle a sharp reversal candle and this is the only ETF that could break below the weekly memory support it broke below the daily memory support as well relative performance is showing that it is underperforming the market activity pattern is bearish if we combine the result from the market breadth analysis with the outcome of the market ETFs analysis we conclude that the market is moving in a sideways fashion however the internals are more bearish than bullish IWM has broken below support the others have not broken below support yet therefore we are not clear where the market will go next week you may watch it and then take your trades accordingly however when you drill down from market level to the sector industry level stocks fundamentals and technicals by aligning these forces industry force fundamental force with technical force in all market situations you are able to find low risk high probability trade setups four week sector performance analysis we are analyzing 11 sectors across three review periods the red bar represents performance of this week green bar performance of one week prior to the red bar and blue bar performance of two weeks prior to the green bar together they represent four weeks or about one month of performance market indices and ETFs are range bound and that is reflected in the sectors flip-flopping between gain and loss last week most of the sectors were up you can see that from the green bars coming to the right of the zero line however this week nine of the sectors decline most of the bars red bars came to the left of the zero line so they flip flopped from positive to the negative side therefore we have a bearish picture at the sector level only two sectors gain these are utilities and real estate both are defensive sectors energy continues to be the worst performer last week also it was negative this week it is negative as well OPEC decision to cut oil production had muted reaction on oil the commodity so far and the same is true for energy stocks you may be careful before buying energy stocks if oil starts to go up from here then the energy stocks may give some lucrative buying opportunities sector scorecard and heat map using QH here we are looking at the 11 sectors across 12 monthly review periods and then more frequently over 10 days 5 days etc cyan represents strength magenta represents weakness this week's performance is shown by the scores under 5 days column utilities and real estate are the best performing sectors industrials and energy are the worst performing sectors utility had been strong for a while and so is true for real estate on the downside 
energy had been down for a very long time. If you are looking for buying opportunities, you may look for them from utilities and real estate. And if you are looking for shorting opportunities, you may look for them in industrials and energy. That is from the sector level. However, sector level is too broad. To make more accurate decision, you may drill down into the industry level and buy in the strongest industries and short in the weakest industries. Best performing industries of this week. We are looking at the industries 5 days and 10 days course. These are the best performing industries. Therefore, you will look for buying opportunities here and avoid shorting. 5 of these 10 best performers are in utilities sector. They are gas utilities, electric utilities, water utilities, independent power producers and energy traders, and multi-utilities. 4 are in the real estate sector. These are retail rates, healthcare rates, residential rates, and specialized rates. The last of the 10 strong industries is gold mining. All of these 10 best performers are in defensive sectors. It probably does not get any more defensive than that. In electric utilities, EXC has an optimal valuation. It gave a trend following go with flow long trade setup on 28th November that has already hit initial profit target. Let's look at the best performing industries using QH industry scorecard and heat map. The best performing industries of this week are shown using cyan color under 5 days column. Electric utilities is strong and it had been strong for a while. We can drill down into the stocks from the stock score cut instantly we can see that EXC is optimally valued. It is with cyan color under valuation column. This stock went up by 2.8% this week. We can click the chart button to open EXC in Q Global on Metastock. In the weekly chart it is going up the weekly candle colors are bullish for two successive weeks. The relative performance is showing that it is outperforming the market. On this day, it gave us a cyan color candle while the stock was in uptrend with higher highs and higher lows. It pulled back and went up giving us a cyan color candle. That was the signal for taking a trend following go with flow long trade setup. Profit target would be at the upper boundary level that was hit in a few days. The industry continues to be strong. The stock is still optimally valued. In this case, you may book partial profit at the initial profit target with discipline and continue to hold remaining position with trailing stop trying to let profit run. If you analyze QH, you will see that soft drinks industry is also strong. It is not one of the 10 best performing industries, but it is a strong industry. And in that industry, COKE has an optimal valuation. You could buy it on 30th October using the setup, pull back to value and then break out of squeeze with heavy activity. I will discuss this technique in more detail in the live Monday morning meet. Worst performing industries of this week. You will look for shorting opportunities in these industries and if you are having a long position, you would be careful. Specialty stores is one of the worst performers. It had been weak over 10 days as well as over 5 days. 
SIG in this industry has negative earnings growth. On 4th December, it gave a trend following go with flow short setup while it was also breaking below the weekly memory trend line support. This week, the stock fell by 25.4%. As earning was nearby, you could close or hedge any long position that you might have and take a very profitable short trend, probably using short call vertical to avoid earning related risk in stock trading. In QH, the worst performing industries of this week are shown by magenta color under 5 days column. Specialty stores was stronger earlier, shown by cyan color scores, and now it has turned weak, magenta. If we drill down to the stocks, we can see SIG has negative earnings growth for all the three successive quarters and also for the one year and two year periods. This stock dropped by more than 25% this week. SIG using Q at a glance template. This was supported by memory support in the weekly chart, it was inside a triangle pattern. This week it broke below the memory support, ended with a very bearish shape and bearish color candle. The drop happened with heavy activity. On this day, it gave us a magenta color candle that was the optimal short position. It gave a go with flow trend following short trade setup. The shot could be taken at the end of the day with stop just above recent high. After that, the stock dropped sharply. This was a drop associated with earnings. As earnings was nearby, you could take the short trade using short call vertical instead of using stocks. The short trade setup appeared precisely when it was breaking the weekly memory support. Therefore, you take the shot with higher confidence and end up with a highly profitable trade. Accelerating industries. We study these industries looking for buying opportunities. This may not be at the forefront. This may be behind other industries at present, but they are gaining momentum fast. By identifying fundamentally strong stocks in these industries and looking for buy setups, you are often able to catch the stocks just as they are starting to turn up along with the industry. QH shows that reinsurance is an accelerating industry. It's not one of the 10 most accelerating industries, but one of the accelerating industries. In this industry, RNR has positive earnings growth for three successive quarters. Therefore, it is fundamentally strong in terms of earnings growth. It shows a textbook example of how Q headwind can help you buy a fundamentally strong stock well ahead of others. On 15th November, it gave a headwind reversal trade setup while it was also bouncing up precisely from the weekly memory support level. That was the lowest point of the stock. Since the headwind long setup, RNR has gone up by 14%. You could buy the stock confidently because of its fundamental strength and because it gave a headwind reversal trade setup at weekly memory support level. In Q scorecard, the accelerating industries are shown by cyan color under PACE 5 days column. This PACE column represents acceleration. Reinsurance, this industry was weaker earlier, shown by magenta color. Now it turned cyan, stronger industry, and it also accelerated, shown by the PACE column. When we drill down, we identify RNR. This stock has robust earnings growth for three successive quarters. 
188% to 87% to 103% earnings growth. It went up by 6.4% this week. However, you could buy it much earlier using the unique Q headwind reversal trade setup. RNR using at a glance template. In the weekly chart, it came to the memory support level and precisely reversed from there on this candle. That week ended with a very bullish shape candle. The color was magenta but the shape was bullish. While that was happening in the weekly chart, in the daily chart on this day, it gave us a bullish headwind reversal signal. It also gave a bull release signal showing the stock was oversold earlier but not oversold anymore from this day and it gave us a possible reversal signal. The weekly candle shape was bullish therefore it gave us a textbook example of bullish headwind reversal trade setup. You could buy it at the end of that day putting stop just below recent low that would be just below the memory support in the daily as well as the memory support in the weekly. Since then the stock went up strongly. At the right edge it continues to be a strong stock. It is in an industry that is accelerating. Therefore there is no need to close enter position. Partial position you would have closed already with discipline and then the remaining position you may continue to hold with trailing stop trying to let profit run. Once again the bullish headwind and this time bullish headwind coming at memory support level gave you an opportunity to buy this stock much ahead of others right at the lowest point. Decelerating industries these were at the forefront and now they are slowing down. Therefore, if you are holding long position, you may be careful, book profit or hedge your position and you may look for short opportunities. We are looking at this industry's 5 days and 10 days course. All the 5 days scores are significantly below 10 days scores, showing that this industry is decelerated. Semiconductor equipment is the most decelerating industry. BRKS, it's not BKRS, it should be BRKS. In semiconductor equipment industry, dropped by 14.1% this week. Very large drop. The stock is overvalued with slowing earnings growth. Earnings growth is still positive but slower than previous quarter. Therefore, you might start to look for a short setup in this stock. The stock was overvalued, the industry was decelerating. BRKS stopped right at memory resistance on Friday 30th November and then again on this Monday 3rd December. Looking at this weakness, you could be ready for a short trade based on the two successive reversal down days and you could identify these memory touch downs using Q sonar scans. You could be ready and enter the short trade on Tuesday 4th December when it displayed the trend following go with flow short trade setup. As you could be ready ahead of time in this case you could take the trade with minimal risk using fine tune intraday chart. In QH, the decelerating industries are shown with magenta color under paste 5 days column. Semiconductor equipment is the most decelerating industry and the 5 day score shows that it is already weak. It was stronger earlier. You can see that from the more cyan colors in the three previous review periods. This week it is weak and it is decelerating at the same time. If we drill down, we find the stocks BRKS is overvalued 
shown by magenta color under valuation column and it has slowing earnings growth. It is still positive in the latest quarter but less than the earnings growth of previous quarter. The stock dropped by a massive 14.1% this week. BRKS using at a glance template. In the weekly chart, the stock already had a memory resistance line. One week ago, price closed just below that. This week, price tried to go above the memory resistance but sharply fell, creating a false upside breakout. In the daily chart, for two successive days, it came to the memory resistance line and stopped there, ended with indecisive shape candles. Both of those candles had upper as well as lower tails. Because you had memory resistance in weekly, memory resistance in daily, and price was struggling to go above that, and price was overbought you could start to look for short setup. That short opportunity came the very next day. We had a magenta color candle. That was the entry signal for go with flow trend following short setup. As you could be ready with the stock selection, you could take the short using Q fine tune intraday chart and precision entry technique. BRKS using fine tune chart 10 minute interval. On these two days, price tried to go above the memory resistance that was in the daily chart but failed. Next day, after price open, early range high and low levels were formed. You could take a shot right at the point price went below early range low, put stop just above early range high. The stop was never hit. The stock fell sharply on that day and continued to go down further in next two days. Using the early range breakout technique on Q fine tune chart, you could make a very precise short entry in this case. Those were the regular topics. I will analyze more stocks using live systems. 360 degrees analysis in the Monday morning meet. You may register for that session from the education live class page. Let me summarize. From the market breadth and market ETF study, we see that market is in a sideways range, wide sideways range. It is near the lower end of the range. From the lower end of the range, we normally expect price to go up. However, we see that the internals are turning more and more bearish. New high low, advanced decline, up down volume, all are turning more bearish. For the ETFs, from the volume pattern, we see they are more bearish than bullish. Therefore, there is a chance that instead of reversing from the lower end of the sideways range, price will fall down further. And if that breakdown happens, you may be extra cautious about any long position you may be holding. That is all that I plan to share in today's session. Thank you for attending. I look forward to seeing you in our next session. Have a great weekend and trade profitable.